that in my presentation. She'll be very glad. And here we have the Bernard Foundation, which I'm on the board of, and we have a few board members in the room, actually. In 1971, when the BNDCA was three years old, and there were no regional clubs yet, the first entries were made in a database that became the backbone of the Bernard Foundation. This was started by Barbara and Mark Packard. It was born in the Silicon Valley of, of the San Francisco Bay Area, where the Packards live, and they actually attended a course at UC Santa Cruz to learn how to use the SPSS program, a punch card input to timeshare mainframe, to computerize the data on a growing number of burners. It started originally recording their vital statistics and their people connection in the beginnings of health records by adding the first three OFA hit screening numbers, numbers one, two, and three. So OFA basically, the first dogs ever done had to have an OFA done on them were Bernie's Mountain Dogs. And part of the reason that I find this very interesting is it goes to show you that even as far back as the 70s, it was realized that we were having some health problems in the breed. One of the most prominent problems at that time was hips and elbows and uh, other things. And then, you know, as the years go by, you know, other things pop up. Um, right now, we're seeing an increase in, um, oh my gosh, my mind is going blank. Right now, we're seeing an increase in, oh, I'm not going to say the dog yeah. has DM. We're also seeing an increase in, what's the one with the liver? I'm totally going blank. Uh, no. liver shots. Not liver shots. I'm totally going blank. I'm so sorry. People come to me like this. So this is the formation of the Bernard Foundation. Now, this is the end of the, the historical part of the presentation. The next part I'm going to show you is a little bit about the history uh, and what's going on historically with some research that I'm still doing in the breed. And as I said, I collected a bunch of stuff. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about Stanford University in California. The Stanfords were very, very wealthy people. They loved to travel to Switzerland. They loved to travel to Europe. We have two people in the British Mountain Club of America that were walking down the halls of Stanford University several years ago. They came across this painting. The painting depicts a group of the Stanford's friends. And here we have young Leland Stanford with a dog. If we look at the dog, it looks exactly like Bernie's Mountain Dog. Now, if you go to Stanford University today, many of the dormitories are named after Swiss names. The Stanford's also imported many Swiss artifacts and things like that. And we kind of wondered, could they have possibly imported a dog? Fortunately, the university does not know a lot about this painting. And it's, a very, it's one of those very difficult paintings, because something that was very famous to do in the Victorian era was, um, if you go back there at the time, the Victorians were very focused on death. You know, so when somebody would die, it was a humongous, humongous event for them. A lot of times you'll see even wreaths made out of hair um, of people that have passed away that are still preserved and actually highly collectible today. Um, but one of the things that they also did was they would do strange little paintings. This is a painting that was done, uh, it was done in 1880. I want to go back to it. Let's see if I can get back to it. It's not going to be Okay. Anyway, a lot of the people in this painting were dead by 1880. A lot of the people in this painting weren't even born in 1880. They were born later. One of the things that we discovered is that the artist that did the painting, it was done by several artists, technically. They would add in different friends as they came and went in the Stanford's life. <laughs> so I likened to this to you having a painting in your, in your living room of a uh, family members, including your sister-in-law that you may not like, your brother eventually divorces her, and she's just painted out. <laughs> That's kind of what was going on with the Stanfords. Oh, we got to go back. There we go. Oh, we're back. Okay. Now, one of the reasons the Stanford painting is quite interesting to me is that uh, there is a photo taken in Colorado Springs, Colorado in 1880. There's a reason this photo is very, very important to American burner research. It's the first actual dated item that we have, and this is from my personal collection, that has a dog that looks like a burner in it. Is there any question in your mind whether that dog's a burner? And this was taken in Colorado Springs, 1880. Now, one of the reasons we feel this is very important is because at this time period, directly going through Colorado Springs was a railroad. 
that led right to Stanford University. So we kind of wonder, could some things have gone on along the way there? We also have Queen Alexandria in Denmark. She was a well-known dog lover. And we have her traveling on a ship here. Do you see the two dogs that she's with? They look like Bernie's Mountain Dogs. Incidentally, we have another dog here that also looks like Bernie's Mountain Dog. They are a little bit smaller than the dogs of today, but they pretty much do look like they could have been Bernie's Mountain Dogs. So I'm currently researching that. Let's see what else we have. Burners of sled dogs. You know, burners did pull a lot. But I'm finding that in a lot of the Alaskan photos that I'm coming across, and even some Michigan photos that I found, there are uses of burners as sled dogs. So I'm kind of researching that because we're seeing, I've seen a lot more of this cropping up. And I'll show you a few more photos of it, actually. And this is Baldy of Nome, who was a very, very famous sled dog. Now, I have to tell you that uh, Baldy of Nome is not an official Bernie's Mountain Dog. The sled dogs back then were kind of bred, a little bit purebred, but a little bit mutts as well. And it's my belief that there may have been some Swiss dog influence in Baldy of Nome. As you can clearly tell, he does look a lot like a Bernese Mountain Dog or a Swiss Mountain Dog at the time. And he was actually a very, very, very famous dog that won the Iditarod a few times. <coughs> so, all of you are going to leave you. In Nome, Alaska, here we have another postcard uh, with another dog that looks like a burner in it. And we have another one in Seward, Alaska in 1910 with another dog that looks like a burner. And here we have one from Nome, Alaska in 1903 with a few dogs that look like they could be related to burners. Let's see. Here we have Mackinac, Michigan, a dog that clearly looks like it could be a burner. And this is from 1912. Here we have New Hampshire, 1917, some dogs that kind of look like they could be related to burners. Sheboygan, Michigan, these ones don't really look like it. I debated whether or not to take them out of the presentation, but I like the photo. Um, they're using dogs to pull a sled to deliver the U.S. mail. And they kind of look like they could have some burner relatives, maybe not. This is an unknown location and an unknown time period, but here we have another dog that looks like it could be an early burner ancestor. And this is a neat one. This is a typical Canadian scene of sled dogs. And here we have two dogs that look like they could be related to burners. Keep in mind, though, when they were doing sled racing and sleds and stuff like that, they didn't actually breed the purebred dogs. They were just breeding dogs to dogs. It wasn't so much like, oh, let's, let's breed this dog A to dog B because they're the same breed. It was more or less, let's, talk, let's breed this winner to this winner to produce a truly outstanding winner. So that's why we have some interesting breeds. Now, Stereopticons were the predecessor to Viewmasters. And this is one from my collection of a little girl and a little boy looking at a possum. And here we have a dog that looks like a cute little female burner. Now, what's really interesting about this is I have two Stereopticons in my entire collection. And I just find it really strange that both of them are possums with burners. I, just, I have no idea why. This is a, a boy and his brother who are, you know, hunting, obviously. I believe there is a gun somewhere in the photo that I magnified at some point. And here, this is my favorite photograph in my collection. This was taken in the Great Plains, and it has a dog that looks like it could be a burner. And here we have a farm dog from the 1920s in the U.S. This was, um, it's believed this was actually taken in Kansas, but there's absolutely no proof that it could be one of the Kansas farm dogs from, from uh, um, <coughs> Schleiss. But it is believed that it was taken in Kansas. So it kind of looks like it could be a burner. And here's just some more photographs from my collection of dogs that look like they could be burners. Again, I say these dogs are not burners, but they could be. Um, and one of the reasons I, I do this is to show you that um, a lot of these dogs, burners were formed basically from mutts in Switzerland. And that's what we did in the U.S. as well. So it is, it is probably pretty...